what do you have going on here and what are we looking at? We are looking at a mobile solar generator that I built um, with my cousin during the pandemic when the world looked like it was ending and I didn't know what was happening. So I built something so my time would be well spent no matter what happened and if the world went to shit then I have a solar generator and if everything was, went fine then I have a solar generator. So Sweet. Now things are kind of back to normal so I'm using it for things like this. A festival produ festival production, uh, off grid construction. Anyone that wants to live off the grid, um, I can turn this depending on the orientation of the sun, depending on what time of day it is. Uh, it's about it's about uh, two and a half kilowatts of solar power, six thousand watt output inverter, and fourteen point three kilowatt hours storage. So wow! Have a pretty hefty battery in here, uh, even on a day like today. Uh, we're usually pretty good, um, so this battery uh, stuff is like actually a new addition I put in a couple months ago. Wow. So, um, and it's very low, very low footprint in here, like, you know, very small footprint, so I can still use this as like a storage trailer to transport like music gear, stage production stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it definitely gets the job done. I just added a 50 amp plug on here. Uh, this is like a new, new addition within the last like 48 hours. Oh my gosh. Uh, put in this 50 amp honking plug here. Whoa. Uh, and this is going 100 feet to a breakout box that has uh, six 20 amp circuits, uh, 30 amp and uh, 50 amp through. Uh, so we can run the, to the vendors. We're powering 12 vendors, uh, half of which are food vendors using uh, like heating elements, blenders, freezers, refrigerators, we're powering the sound equipment over here, so. Are you powering the other stage too? No, it's too far of a distance. Okay. If it was closer, we would. So uh, you're powering like dozens of vendors and a stage, yeah. and with no sun right now, you're still pulling in sun because yeah. you have so many panels. A few hundred watts of, of solar is still coming through right now, even despite like the overcast. Yeah. Um, That's amazing. And it's, it's definitely helping offset a little bit of what's being uh, consumed right now. We're getting to be around lunchtime, so. And this whole setup, you can you can change the angle and flop it down and everything, right? Yeah. So uh, all he this built this frame. Down, all of this folds down for whenever it's being transported. That's so cool. And could you briefly go over like what each of these things are in here? Absolutely. So yeah, so this is the battery right down here. Okay. This is a wiring cabinet that goes between them. As okay. you can tell, like they're this like is bought as like one kit. Right. And so this like the wires are nice and like hidden away. Uh, the inverter is a six thousand watt inverter. It's an inverter charger hybrid, so it's also okay. charging the battery as well as converting from uh, DC to AC. And the DC comes from the sun. DC and then... comes from the sun and the batteries. Batteries are DC as well. Okay. And. Um, so yeah, right now we're, the people collectively are using about like 2,000 watts of power right now. Gotcha. Uh, which is basically a third of what this can put out. Wow. So, um, Amazing. So yeah. And then it's running to this panel, which is going to our 50 amp breaker and then four 20 amp, uh, four 20 amp circuits. Amazing. Yeah. That's a lot of juice. Yeah. Very cool. So, uh, you are planning to keep doing festivals like this a little bit yeah. and and then also powering your own sets for your DJing. Yeah. Yeah, yep. that's that was kind of one of the ver initial visions was like I want all of my like performances to be powered by solar cuz I've been doing solar for 10 years and I've been doing music for even longer and so just trying to bring it all together into one one yep. thing. And you you've been working with solar for 10 years. You've done you've worked with Tesla. Yeah, I worked um, for Tesla. Solar for four City. Years. Worked for Tesla for four years. Um, I've been in all aspects of the industry for yep. uh, over the course of ten years. You just finished a job being a uh, commercial solar project yeah, manager. I was a commercial solar project manager for a year. I did uh, uh, formerly known Heinz Field, now Acrisure Stadium uh, solar install, and like a bunch of other like high profile yeah. commercial installs. It's um, amazing how small of a footprint this actually takes up. And it's really reflective of like the small input and the small footprint that solar takes up too. Yeah. In in as as far as like resource management in the world. So. Okay. Yeah, it's starting to become a lot more feasible to replace uh, like gas and diesel generators for this application. The thing is, is like a lot of people are kind of going after like the bigger 
money makers, which is like residential homes and commercial properties yep. and uh, like a grid le- uh, utility scale solar. So big fields and everything. People are just going after the money. Right. I think that also, you know, it's not just about that. It's also like, how do we have our good time? You know, the, the ways that we power our like fun times and things like this. You know? Right. It's like, this is important too. We need to like also be looking at this. And so really not enough people doing this and that's why I wanted to do it. Uh, so yeah, happy to be out here providing solar power for, for MycoFest. Very cool. Yeah. Thanks for doing what you do, Tony. Absolutely. All right, Tony, so it's Sunday. MycoFest is over. How did it go with the solar? Well, it was a nice uh, experiment. Uh, with the new setup with the new battery and the new inverter and really low UV index conditions yeah. which has kind of been a first uh, it's one thing to come with a solar generator like already charged to 100% with the batteries topped off and like you know run stuff for a day uh, and, and then you know go home but when you're trying to sustain the, the power for uh, an event for three days sometimes four days if you're powering vendors getting their stuff set up and everything mm-hmm. then uh, then yeah it's it's a bit more of a challenge because you're having to uh, you know you're using a lot of power in a day and a night uh, and then you're having to show up again the next day and be able to provide power again right and again and right. so uh, if the sun doesn't come out then you can't recharge the batteries and so it posed an interesting challenge but there was a couple things that kind of came through from that for me, which was number one, um, there is still a decent amount of power that is able to be absorbed even in the cloudy conditions. I think we had a, U, uh, a UV index high of five uh, out of, I believe, 10 uh, on Friday, which is extremely low, uh, at least in terms of you know getting good sun in the summer. And so, even then, we were still able to get a few hundred watts of solar coming in. Now, the challenge was that we are also powering food vendors here, all of the food vendors. Actually, right, which have started. like a lot of energy draws, like heating elements and fridges. Yeah, yeah, and the fridges aren't so bad, you know, they kick on every once in a while, uh, you know, and that's fine. Um, usually they're not in direct sunlight, they're like under a canopy, and so like... You know, the, the heating problems. elements are a big deal, though. The heating elements are a big deal. The blenders kind of, kind of, you know, all the smoothies running, you know, back to back, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, a lot of the big hot plates, like heating up big, big pots of cacao that have to like stay hot, right? Stay on. Um, you know, that that was the challenge. You know, yep. a sound system. I'm able to quantify how much electricity we need for that. The speakers are this. Yeah. The projector is that. The right. mixer is this, the uh, the instruments are this, yep. you know, lights and stuff. Like I'm able to like dial that all in and be like, okay, that that's gonna stay on and stay running for X amount of time and that's gonna take X amount of power. Yep. But vendors coming in with whatever they may bring, it's it's kind of a wild card. And, yeah, and, they and, could all be, you know, having lights and all sorts of blenders and different things that, right. and you don't even know. So you kind of went in blind with some expectations, but then also you had, the precarious situation with the weather and all the clouds right. and um you know were there any points in the weekend where you're like oh i'm not sure if we're gonna make it yeah definitely friday with with there really not being any sun at all and then thursday night a lot of people got their stuff on the vendors got in they got set up they wanted to make some food for themselves it yeah was basically like the festival started on warming thursday. up yep uh and so th- for so Thursday night, we, you know, we went through power, and then Friday we really didn't have any way of like replenishing it, and then it was essentially pulling more power than we were actually able to to get from the sun right. all day, and so we were constantly in a state of loss. Right. And then into the in, into the evening, um, I made the call to try to you know get within the festival, get a generator for over there for just at least the vend- the food vendors that yeah. that have that heavy draw. Right. And so the the moments where we were able to get some sun in, I was able to like utilize that sun to charge the batteries. Right. Whereas it was kind of just going just straight out to the vendors, and the batteries weren't getting any 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 juice. The lowest it got was what fifty percent. Forty. Forty. So it got down to forty percent, and that was pretty low. Yeah. But with with the sun that came back out, yeah. and just with having a small generator, you were able to. Do you think? 
in retrospect, you could have been able to power everything? Yeah, so if there was, if, if there, I think that I probably could have let it go. I was trying to be cautious because I knew we had all of Saturday. Yep. And Saturday was looking like it was going to be cloudy as well. So I was like, if we're going to go into another day of no sun and not being able to recharge it, then um, I don't want these food vendors to be like without the power they need to like run the business. You know, they paid yep. for a spot here. They have paid for additional for electricity. They should get that. And, um, you know, I can't control the weather, but yep. like, I figured it was worth a shot. And there was somebody with a generator they weren't using. We were able to bring it over and it was just a quick swap and it yep. was no problem. And, and we were able to do away with it at night and just pull, you know, because it's loud and obnoxious and yep. connect it back up to the solar generator. Yep. Um, and then, you know, we were able to do that again today during like dinner time, basically have the, have the generator running and then, and then turn it off. And then all of today, and you know, from from last night on, we've just been on the solar generator because today we have sun, and we're uh, like almost, golden, almost a seventy percent uh, charge again, which really it just needs it needs like a couple hours of direct sunlight to charge back up to one hundred percent, and and that's all we really needed, and so um, yeah, amazing. It's, it's been it's been working out. In hindsight. Uh, it, I think that it might be nice to have uh, sort of like a biodiesel generator that we can uh, have mounted to the nose of the trailer, and that'll be tied into the system, which it has inputs already for that. Wow! It automatically will shift to a backup generator. Whoa! Maybe a blink of a light. Yeah. Or whatever. So uh, maybe some of these food vendors could bring you some of their used cooking oil, exactly. and you could feed that's, the biodiesel generator that'll feed the battery that'll replenish their energy. That's that's the idea. That's the idea. <laughs> That's amazing. That's a closed loop system right there. Right. Yep. Right. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you for the work you do, Tony. And uh, I will see you at the next festival. Peace. Yeah. Much love.